Okay, welcome to part 7 of video game design. In part 7 we are going to get our characters to move. So in the last video we started creating this private sub over here called draw our character. And right now our program uh, should allow you to put type in a command either W, A, S, or D and the int movement number should change. And if we can control it with a number we can make certain things happen. So with that in mind, right now let's go ahead and create some conditions. First one's going to be if int movement is equal to 1, then we're going to do something. Int movement is only equal to 1 if in our code we press the, the W key. Because when we press the W key, int movement changes to 1. So that's our up command. So I'm just going to keep track of it over here else if int movement is equal to 2. Uh, for me at least that's my down command. Else if int movement is equal to 3. Uh, that I believe int movement equal to 3 is my left command. Oops. Or else if int movement is equal to 4, then that is my right command. Okay, so when I get one of these inputs, the character should be moving in a certain direction. Go ahead and get your, uh, your pixel sheet that you created earlier and hopefully you got coordinates of the start of the characters and the end of the characters. If you're not quite sure where these numbers are coming from for me, uh, please review the previous video uh, where I discuss how I get these coordinates. So for my character, he, uh, he starts at 120 pixels on the far left end and the, the height is 322 pixels. So for me, I'm going to, for int1, create a new rectangle that is whoops, 120 by 322 so 120 by 322 pixels and now the size of the image that I want to like crop out so since I'm running up I want to like crop out this image and right now I got this coordinate right here uh, it has to be the length in the X and the length in the Y. So I'm just going to go to my sheet and 120 minus 172 is 52. So in my X direction I'm going to have 52 pixels. And in my whoops, Y direction 322 minus 366 is 44 pixels. So I'm going to do 44 like so. So now that's going to draw out my character just looking up and it's not really animating at this point it's just looking up. Okay let's let me do the down one and hopefully you'll see exactly what I'm doing um, from this. So for down I have 410 uh, let me just copy this line also. So I have 410 pixels that's where the image starts and then the image starts in the Y direction at 337 pixels. So I'm going to type that in. And then the distance is 410 to 463. So that's 53 pixel difference. And in the Y direction, that's 337 by 383. So that's a 46 pixel difference. OK. I'm going to move this to the side so I could work with it a little bit faster. Uh, and I'm going to do the other ones. So let's see. R equals new rect, not mu, new rectangle. And then let's do 9, 100, 100 oops, 34. 56. So I'm doing the exact same method I did for 
numbers 1 and 2, and for int movement 4, let's say r is equal to new rectangle, Six, one oh seven, forty seven, fifty three. Okay. Um, also, let's go ahead and put in a default condition for when the character is just like facing the screen like this. So if you've already uh, got the lo um, location start and the size of that, go ahead and put that in uh, using an else condition. So this is going to be an else, and this is just going to be him at rest equals a new rectangle and mine is 59, 170, 30, and 67. Now I just noticed a very small mistake. Uh, up here, after we store int movement into our, we give int movement a value, at the end we take int movement and we put it in int last movement. So right now it's an int last movement and we even pass it in through int last movement. So we just need to change all these to int last movement to fix up that issue. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to draw our characters into the game now. Um, we want to probably, let's try draw, drawing them after we've rendered the screen, after our brushes, let's try to do it over here. Okay, and I'm going to call this drawing our character. Okay, so first of all, we want to call our sub, uh, draw our character. So draw our character. And we're passing in the value of int last movement. After we've done that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want, at least for me, I'm going to want to clear out this white color or else the white's going to kind of get in the way and it's going to look very blocky. And there's a very easy way to like eliminate colors that you don't want. Um, since our image is stored in BMP Sprite, all you need to do is BMP Sprite dot make transparent and then you just need to tell it what color you don't want to show. So in my case, I don't want any of my images to show the color white. Yes, I know my character has a little bit of white in like certain areas, but like for the most part, for me it will work. Uh, if your color isn't white, if it's red, change it to red. If it's blue, change it to blue. Uh, but this is a quick way to eliminate colors that you don't want. Okay, and now let's draw it onto the screen. So G dot draw image, and this is going to look very familiar, draw image, uh, BMP sprite, comma, and let's draw them in the middle of the screen. So what do we got? We got 19 and 14, so let's do 9 and 7. So his x direction is going to be 9 times 32 pixels. His y direction is going to be 7 times 32 pixels. Uh, and then we're going to just draw in R because we specified R over here which so it knows what the pixel sizes are. Whoops. And then I believe if we just left it like this it would give us an error. So what you have to do when drawing a character or some other special units or when like doing this type of command where you're extracting a portion of an image out of an, a huge image like this, you need to end it with the command graphics, uh, whoops, graphics unit dot pixel. And now with that in place, let's go ahead and run the code. And you'll notice if you did it correctly, you should see your character in the middle of the screen. And if you press on the different keys, hopefully your character is animating correctly or not really animating at this point, but looks like he should be moving in that direction, even if he isn't quite moving in that direction. So, not quite there yet, but we're getting close. 
Okay, so now that we have him looking in that direction, let's get him animating in like one direction. It does take a little bit of time, but it can be worth it. Okay, so first thing you're going to want to do if you haven't already do, done this, you want to get the coordinates of every single image in a, like a sequence. So I did his left direction, and I already got all the coordinates for him running in the left direction. And you could probably guess why, because we're going to have to code in each of those. Now, the way we got the water to move was every single second we got the water to change. But if we had the animation change every single second, it would be an, it would be an extremely slow animation. It wouldn't be worth doing. So we want all of them to happen in a single second, which is a little bit more tricky, but it's really not that bad. We're going to use milliseconds to achieve that. And at the start of our program, uh, I initialized something under the sprites when we're creating our character called millisecond master. I'm a, and I call it that because when I figured it out, I was uh, pretty uh, excited about it. So millisecond master, this is going to have the current millisecond value in it. Uh, let's scroll over to our line here that draws in everything. So int last movement. Let's add a, something else to this and vb crlf. And and we're going to be record or we're going to be looking at the current millisecond. And int millisecond master. Okay. Oops. Error expression expected. Oh, delete that, put that there. Okay, so that fixed it. Uh, so, go back to your animation where we draw our character. And we're going to add what milli, int millisecond master is equal to. And we're going to say it's equal, not of, um, and I'm, I'm just going to write this because you're familiar with this one, time of day dot second. But if you look at the clock at your computer, the clock of your computer, even when you click on it, does not show milliseconds. So uh, first of all, you want instead of seconds, you want millisecond, but then change time of day to now. So it's going to extract the value of milliseconds right now at that instant. And once you've done that, go ahead and run your code. And mine, you cannot see it on, so I'm going to quickly shorten the the text on it. I'm just going to change it to millisecond. Now let's run it again. Okay, and if you're looking at your code, you should see the millisecond value is changing. And it's giving us a range. The range is from zero, se or zero milliseconds to 1,000 milliseconds. Because once you reach 1,000 milliseconds, you reset back to zero to the next second. So with that in mind, Scroll back down here to our code. Uh, since I got my left to animate, I'm going to go over to my left. And once we've established that I have pressed the left key or the A key on the keyboard, we're going to trigger inside this if statement another one that checks which millisecond it is. And based on the millisecond that it is, is the animation that's going to happen. So if int millisecond master is greater than or equal to zero and int millisecond master is less than or equal to 167 then we're gonna do something. Now how did I get these numbers 0 and 167? I took the amount of frames I had. So I had six frames. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I took those six, and I, uh, I took 1,000, 
and I divided it by 6. And when I divided it by 6, I got roughly 167. So for each animation, I want it to last, you know, one sixth of a second. So that's why each of them is going to happen in relatively um, 167 milliseconds. So the first animation is going to happen if it's between 0 and 167. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put this starting animation in there. Um, else if, let me copy this line, int millisecond master is equal to, or less than or equal to 168, because I don't want it to like jam up if they're the same number, and if I added 167 to that, that's going to be 333, then I'm going to want my next coordinate to play out. Okay. Okay. And I pre-wrote all of mine. So I'm going to just go ahead to save on time. I'm going to copy the rest of mine and I'm going to paste them in here. Oops, and I had an end if I believe already. So to get an animation for the left command running, I have zero, was it one, two, three, four, five, six if else if statements inside of this. So when you press left, it's going to check also which millisecond it is and see which one of these it falls into. And based off of which one of these it falls into, it's going to select a particular image out of this drawing. So if that's a little bit confusing, raise your hand. Uh, I will help you, or I'll explain it a little bit better. But if you run it now, character standing still, <laughs> but if you press in the left direction, you'll notice right away that he's running, or animating. And it's just checking the millisecond and checking that I'm pressing the uh, A key and it's creating that animation. Now the other sides aren't animated, uh, but I could or animate them if I wanted to. I just need to go back to the image and I need to get all the pixel counts for all of these ones. Okay, so the character's moving now. Now let's get him to move actually across the screen because he can. it looks like he's moving, but he's still stuck in the center of the screen and he's not free to do anything that he wants to do. So in order to do that, we need to create a private sub. So let me head back to the form. Let's try to do this quick. We're a little short on time. And let's call this private sub character movement. And actually thinking about it, we don't need this. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's go over here. When we're drawing our character, the location where it's being printed onto the map is controlled by the location in the X direction and the location in the Y direction. Now when we created our character, we created an X position and a Y position uh, integer value for each of those. So let's go ahead and just take this 9 by 32 and this 7 by 32 since we want it to start at the center of the screen and let's put it inside of the X value and the Y value. So now X position is 9 times 32, Y position is 7 by 32. And if that's true, then we can go over here to where we draw our character and we can change this to the word X position and we can change this to the word Y position. So that's currently controlling our pixel counts. Now, we want these values to change based off what key we press. And the key we press will be located over here, like if we press the key W, S, A, or D. So if we press the key W, think about what we want to happen in our code. We want the value to go up. We want the character to go up. And the, the higher you get on the screen, the closer you're getting to y equal to zero. So if y right now is like 400, then up here it's zero. So we want to actually subtract from the y position. So y position minus equals, and let's say 
uh, we'll, we'll move him two pixels at a time. So if that's the case, then if you were moving the character down, it would be going positive in the y direction. If you're moving the character to the left, the more left you go, the closer to zero you are in the x direction in terms of pixel count. Because remember, here is the zero, zero pixel. Um, over here, you're at like x is equal to like 400 or something. So you, the closer you get to this side, the closer you get to zero. And the farther, the farther away you get from zero, because it's zero to 750. Uh, so this is x position minus equals uh, two pixels. And this is the opposite, x position, x, x position plus equals two pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a run. And you'll notice that when I press on a key now, the character is running across the screen. Now there's no animation happening here, but there could be um, if you program it. But there is one definitely here. The character can run across the screen. Now, he does look like he's going a little bit slow, so if you want him to go faster, simply adjust the pixels that this character translates every time you press on that key. So I'm going to double his speed by changing the 2 to 4, and give this a run, and you'll notice right away that he runs a little bit better. Now the problem I've run into is that when you press a key, there's a slight delay before the character actually starts running. And I think I might have a solution to this. And we'll try it out and we'll see if it works. Um, right now, we have the character being drawn in the, uh, the mode where it's drawing the entire map. Now it takes time to draw the entire map, and I think that's kind of where the delay or the lag is coming into. So what if we took our character and we uh, were, uh, let's find the right one and we drew him before or when, when we're checking for user input we draw the character out and I'm not sure if this is going to work let's find out um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy these three lines of code and let's just go up here to where we check for user input and I'm going to paste in those three lines of code. I'm going to give this a run, and our character is no longer on the screen. Okay, turns out the new method didn't work. <laughs> so I just tested it, uh, and I snipped it out of the video because I thought it would work, didn't quite get there yet, uh, but I'll keep working on it. Okay, so for part seven, your assignment. Right now, we have one character running across the screen. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to use uh, a different set of keys um, and to get another character on the screen that can be controlled. So essentially creating a two-player game where you control one of the characters and someone else controls one of the other characters. Because later on, you know, we want the characters to fire projectiles at each other. So that's your assignment for this one. Create another character.